I took a journey to the East African lakes to encounter a different side of Africa. This is a place where a variety of species learn the wisdom of balance and coexistence. This is the final resting place for mountain gorillas, which were endangered by humans. The friendly people resemble the lake while welcoming the stranger with warmth rather than prejudice. This time, I'm on the search to find a special lake. It's a place where flamingos, the most beautiful birds known on Earth, dance. Like the precious salt, there's life in the colorful puddles of water that spread like patchwork in the salt field. I encounter the wonders of nature beyond human realms in the infamous Salt Lake in Tanzania. There are many salt lakes, large and small. In East Africa, known as a land of lakes, I head toward Kotwe from Queen Elizabeth National Park to find the secrets of the Salt Lake. This area of Uganda is similar to the size of the Korean Peninsula. One quarter of the land consists of lakes. Kotwe is one of the countless lakes in Uganda. Scenery I've never seen before stretches out before my eyes as I get closer to the lake. Puddles of various colors are lined up in an irregular pattern. Hello. What is this special lake? Uh, hello. Uh, what are you doing here? We're doing salt mining. You can call it salt winning or salt extraction. Ah, you're making salt. Ah. Where is the salt? What I have in my hands is salt. Ah, uh, this one? Yeah. Some salt. Yeah, but if this is salt mined here. Some sort of a factory or a refinery, then uh, it could look. Can I try? Yeah, you can try testing it. This is one grade of salt. <laughs> Take it. <laughs> Take it. Down. This is also salt, which ah. is which is fresh from the salt pan or a salt pond. Uh -huh. This one has been harvested today. The salinity of this lake is about 13%. Considering that most oceans are under 3%, it's a very high number. Salt crystals are formed by sunlight after the lake water is released into the salt ponds along the lake. The unique color is due to the mud and the mineral content. When there is much phytoplankton, the color turns reddish like this. Due to the high salinity of the water, it is impossible to farm. Most residents make their livelihood working in the salt ponds. Hi. I go to meet them. Hi. <laughs> Can I learn how to do? Yeah. 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 The salt production industry began in the 13th century. They still follow the traditional methods to mine the salt. I decide to give it a try. The depth of the pond is about one meter. When the water evaporates to below the knees, the salt crystals on the bottom of the pond are collected. It looks pretty simple, so I thought I'd be good at it. No, the salt is on the other side. Come on. I can feel the sharp salt crystals under my feet. During the dry season when there is no rain, the output increases and salt can be harvested as often as once a week. Once the salt is collected, it is stepped on in order to wash away the mud. Don't the arm movements they make in order to keep balance on top of the salt 
make it look like they're dancing? I give it a try, wanting to be helpful. It's not easy keeping balance on top of the salt basket. After the salt is repeatedly washed and dried, it becomes clean, edible salt. Harvesting salt requires hard labor. However, to these people, their work is their pride, and they forget about the hard work. The cows, actually, those people who deal in the, mm. the tenary industry, leather and tenary industry, mm. they use this salt. In Nairaiki. Ah. <laughs> Why? Hmm? Why? Why? Salt merchants come from all over Uganda, Congo, Rwanda, Sudan, and other neighboring countries. This is for human, human consumption. Clean salt is sold as an edible product. Human edible for the leather industry. The salt that contains mud is sold to make animal feed or for other industrial uses. Kotwi Lake was created by a volcanic eruption. Long ago, as water evaporated, massive salt rocks formed on the bottom of the lake. It is said that it can produce approximately 22,000 tons of salt. For me, the Kotwi Salt Lake is a work of art created by the tropical sun, the salt lake, and the hard work of humans. There is fresh water flowing from the mountain next to the salt lake. It is also used as drinking water. However, not only is this water important to the people, but it's also an essential part in creating Kotwi Salt Lake. This is fresh water coming from underground. It is naturally created. So it flows into the main lake. Of course, the main lake has a mother rock, a base rock, which is a salt rock. So when the fresh water enters the main lake, there are vents in there. The fresh water goes through those vents, it goes and finds the main rock, the mother rock, or the salt rock. So the fresh water dissolves. The fresh water flows from underground into the bottom of the lake. When it reaches the salt rock, it causes it to dissolve. Thanks to the fresh water, a constant level of concentration is provided to the salt lake. It is said there are about 20 stream of water around the salt lake. Ultimately, the salt is produced by fresh water. I visit another salt lake in the area. Uganda is a paradise for birds, so it's easy to see hundreds of different species of birds at any one of its lakes. This place has a different situation. One species of birds dominates this area. They are flamingos. Flamingos are resident to the salt allowing them to live in salt lakes with high alkaline content. Salt lakes are the best habitats for flamingos. 
Not only is it filled with edible moss and plankton, it is also safe because no other animals will go near a salt lake. There is no definite proof of how flamingos grew a tolerance for salt. The largest community of lesser flamingos lives in Tanzania. The salt water is so strong that other animals get burned and die when they're exposed to it. My journey to the East African lakes. I'm off to see Lake Natron, known as a deadly lake where animals cannot survive. I leave Uganda and make my way to Kilimanjaro International Airport in Tanzania. Tanzania is a land of the Serengeti and Kilimanjaro. However, in order to travel to the Salt Lake, we must focus on this place. The East African Rift Valley was created when a dent formed on the weak spot of the continental plates as they broke apart many years ago. It measures 6,400 kilometers in length from north to south. There are volcanic and seismic activities along this area, and that's how large lakes, including Lake Victoria, were formed. Numerous salt lakes line up along the East African Rift Valley. Lake Natron, where I'm headed to now, is one of them. Mount Kilimanjaro was also created by the East African Rift Valley. There is an international airport here, Lake Natron? Yes, Lake Natron. Mm -hmm. yeah. After tomorrow, you can drive in from here to go to Natron. Mm -hmm. You can get some this way. Mm -hmm. uh, Lake Lengai. This mm. one. You can go to sleep on this middle here okay. before to climb in the mountain. Okay. Okay. So tomorrow, you can start from here to go there. Okay. Is it right? Yeah. yeah. Lake Natron is located on the border between northern Tanzania and Kenya. There is no lodging in this area, so we need to take our tents. There are no restaurants or any stores for that matter, so we stock up on four days' worth of food. For dinner for Natron, Lake Natron. The Lake Natron region is the wildest of the wild in Tanzania. Thus, it is a place where you can encounter real Africa. Okay, the thing I think is possible. Finally, we finish our preparations for the trip. <laughs> Lake Natron is about 165 kilometers away. But the road conditions are not good, so we have to travel for about four hours. These are grasslands where trees are rare. Savannah grasslands appear. You have to always be on the lookout in the Tanzanian savannah grasslands. I am able to see wild animals up close. This graceful giraffe is the first giraffe I meet on this journey in Africa. I also see a family of zebras. If you're lucky, you can encounter a group of the herbivores migrating in search for water. After a long drive, I can see the long ridge of the East African Rift Valley stretching across the horizon. I can see Old Dianyo Lengai, one of the volcanoes that are part of the rift. 
think now I can see the front with me. That's the Dona Lengai mountain. Uh -huh. The 100 meters from here. Uh -huh. So the bus is going to go to a start and go hiking at the top of the mountain of Dona Lengai. Old Doinyo Lengai is Tanzania's only active volcano. This region is where the traditional Maasai tribe lives. It is not uncommon for the cattle raised by the Maasai to block the road. I finally arrive at Lake Natron. The lake's floor is exposed because it is currently the dry season. I discover large bones, which I assume belong to cows on the lake's floor. They probably died of thirst or faced their death taking the wrong step into the lake. The lake has high alkaline content, which can cause chemical burns. It is a bit frightening to think such a large lake, measuring up to 1,039 square kilometers, was filled with such strong toxins. There were flamingos living here. Lake Natron is the largest habitat for lesser flamingos that are one meter in height and are pink with black beaks. Ironically, the flamingos are safest and most free at Lake Natron. The Lake of Death supports the life of the flamingos. It's a very mysterious coexistence. 나트론 호수 같은 경우에는 정말 강한 pH9에서 10 정도의 알칼리성을 띠고 있는데요. 어, 그렇게 된 배경은 저기 보이는 어, 하산에서 이 나트륨 성분이 나와서 이곳에 흘러들어 이런 강한 알칼리성 호수가 생성된 것입니다. Old Oinyo Lengai is a volcano that erupts lava that contains sodium. Volcanic ash containing sodium piles up near the top of the mountain as if it's covered by ice caps. How is Lake Natron connected to Old Oinyo Lengai? I want to explore the Old Oinyo Lengai volcano. In order to reach Old Oinyo Lengai, we have to pass through the land where the Maasai tribe lives. They live practicing folk religion and traditional ways of life. To them, Old Oinyo Lengai is an object of great reverence. <laughs> In 2007, there was a big eruption that let out volcanic ash as far away as 18 kilometers. <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps that's the reason why Old Oinyo Lengai means Mountain of God in the Maasai language. They're afraid of the volcano, but they cannot leave because the roots of the Maasai are planted here. 
the mountain of God that controls the provisions of nature. It is Old Uinyo Lengai. After meeting the Maasai tribe, the mountain of God seems higher and more rugged. It is a long day. Before the real exploration of the volcano, we decide to unpack the camping equipment at the camping grounds near the volcano. There are many tourists at the campground. It may seem like an unfamiliar place to us, but this is said to be a desirable travel destination for many Europeans. 2,850 meters. Uh, yes. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to Volcano. Uh, yeah. uh, Your mineralogue, mineralogy. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. You? Yeah, yeah. We are a little, you know, it's very challenging to yeah. climb the uh -huh. Orgairu Lengai mountain okay. <laughs> because it's very slippery and it's new one. Okay. Enjoy your I wish you the best. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. Have fun. Nice. Have fun. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Will the mountain of God allow me to climb? My night is filled with anticipation and fear. Finally, the day of exploration is here. While driving up the mountain, I come across a deep gap in the ground. This gap starts from the volcano and extends all the way toward Lake Natron. I decide to get out of the car and see for myself. There are traces of white powder where the water flowed mixed with volcanic ash. I walk inside the gap and go deeper in toward the volcano. The water, mixed with volcanic ash, probably flowed at a frighteningly fast pace as it would in a flood. The volcano and the lake are connected by canyons. This volcano, which spits out a unique lava containing sodium, is characterized by its activity at night. In order to see the red lava from the crater, you have to begin climbing at midnight and arrive at the crater by dawn. The night is pitch black. We rely on starlight and climb the mountain of God. The ground is covered in ash, and the slippery conditions make it difficult to gain speed. They say it normally takes about six hours to climb to the peak. Before we even arrive at the midpoint, we see signs of daylight. It's not 
바로 이렇게 부서지는 화산재입니다. 그래서 이 지역을 올라가는 게 굉장히 어렵고요. 이 산이 지금 계속 화산재가 미끄러져 내려서 어, 이쪽 올라갈 때마다 흘러내려서 잡고 올라가는 게 무척 어렵습니다. There is no separate hiking trail. Thus, you have to climb along the recently created narrow gaps. The narrow and slippery trail is not easy to walk on. I've traveled to more than a hundred countries to explore the world and experienced many things as a geographer. But climbing Old Dioinyo Lengai is a very special challenge for me. I thought about giving up a few times. But I get the strength to keep going from the people who are with me. After passing three ridges, the maze-like gaps vanish, making it even more difficult to climb. The higher we climb, the steeper it gets, I run out of breath. At last, I can see the mountain of God. The great East African Rift Valley, which looks like wrinkled paper, spreads out within my reach. The little life forms I didn't notice while climbing grabs my attention. 돌만 가득한 황량한 산에 노란색 꽃이 피어 있어요. 정말 생명의 힘은 위대합니다. 정말 아름답네요. 여기서도. The small flower seems to tell the message. If you don't lose balance, you can find hope in any kind of despair. Right now in the, we are in a half way. If you can reach there to the top of the mountain during early the morning, you can see the lava it's shaking there. But when you're reaching at that time, which have already uh, the sunrise have already rise up, the vent may close because the, that that lava can be stuck so that it cannot cool again. Our guide Lome tells us we can still see the lava even after sunrise if we hurry. I hurry my feet toward the peak. After the seventh ridge, the trail becomes even steeper and there are more crystals of sodium carbonate. Near the top of the mountain, the white sodium carbonate crystals spread out thick and wide. It creates an illusion that it's a snow-capped mountain. It also means we're that much closer to the peak. I push with my last remaining strength. Kumana niwa 
Orlando. Oh, it's for you, Yang. Yeah, it's for you to see the mountain. Oh, I'm so excited. You're amazing. It. I'm Yang. I'm so excited. The smoke leaking through the gaps in the rocks seems like the volcano is breathing. However, this release of gas means the crater has already begun to cool down, and we cannot see the lava today. We have to to go back because it is very difficult from here, and it's very slippery. Mm -hmm. And right now we are out of the time. As you see, that there is more crack there, so that I don't know. I, I'm not sure that you cannot, you can oh. do it. Oh, it's all done. You need it. Oh, but I think you cannot. You can't do it. But because you have already reached here, no more things you can see there, there than here. Oh, it's all done. It was she or I myself. Disappointingly. For safety reasons, my guide Lome climbs to the peak alone. The slope is very steep. Lome, who is from the Maasai tribe, runs uphill as if walking across flat ground. This is the gut of the mountain. After ten more minutes of climbing, we are finally face to face with the face of God. Every day, the crater of this mountain boils into lava at night and cools down in the morning. There are recent detections of signs for a big eruption. Right now, it can erupt. We don't have a limited time that Lengai cannot erupt. Maybe tomorrow or whatever. It can erupt at any time. I climbed, mustering all my strength. But old Doinyo Lengai is not an easily approachable mountain. Ah, 정말 분하고까지 보고 싶었는데 너무 위험하다고 그래서 지금 못 가서 굉장히 아쉽습니다. 다음에 어떻게 쓰든지 더 노력해서 끝까지 한번 꼭 가보고 싶습니다. I overlook the wonders of nature from the eyes of the Creator standing on the mountain of God. The reason there are so many lakes in East Africa is related to its Great Rift Valley. Mankind settled at the deep blue lakes formed by the splitting gorge, and the flower of civilization blossomed. I end this journey as I meditate on the limitation of mankind standing on the mountain of God.